All right, got to switch um, the uh, work head back around to use the 5C collets. So I'm going to go ahead and do that loose the motor here. And of course the heater comes on, but it, it's quite cold outside. It's actually snowing. Kind of a tough winter. I, I just noticed my battery's really going down quick, so uh, if it if it uh, clicks off, I'll put a new battery <laughs> So anyway, I get the belt off this thing and uh, loosen it here. Then rotate the head. I think I have to go this way. I have to loosen it a bit to get it past the, uh, the casting. I hope you're all doing good. There we go. Now I got the 5C collet out there. I, uh, the guy, uh, mentioned that he bought a, uh, horizontal milling machine. It looked like he had a logging operation. And, uh, you know, the cost to have a machine work done is uh, skyrocketing as the value of money <laughs> gets worth less. And uh, I think uh, the lowest price shop that I know that would work on logging equipment in the area is about $125 an hour now. And uh, I think the, uh, like the major equipment companies are approaching uh, 200 bucks an hour. And, you know, you can buy a, an old milling machine, uh, you know, fairly cheap. And one of the things, I, I've been around logging operations all my life, and uh, if you can, uh, you know, maintain a, you know, a way of a, a mill, uh, a small farm, uh, ranch operation, and stuff can often really use a way that a have a mill and save quite a bit of money and get things done without having to go to town and uh, kind of keep the uh, overhead down and uh, things moving. But uh, I don't know, it, uh, it just depends, you know, the size of operation and stuff like that. A lot of bigger operations will uh, lease equipment and uh, it's just uh, more economical for them and they can uh, write it off on taxes and all kinds of stuff. But smaller operations might not have that kind of uh, ability. And so having a small machine shop, uh, it kind of makes sense. Uh, I, uh, looking around for uh, you know good deals on equipment, uh, it, they pop up intermittently, but most often something like a, uh, a horizontal mill can be uh, purchased very cheaply, and uh, hopefully you'll get the tooling with it, but uh, the mill I got here out of the junkyard came with very little. It had the, the vertical head and, and the dividing head with it, which was, was pretty amazing. But the horizontal mill tooling right now is pretty uh, inexpensive uh, compared to like if you want Bridgeport tooling or something. It just goes for real cheap. It's heavy and the shipping's high. Though. I was looking at uh, a, uh, HGR uh, closeouts and uh, they got a, right here, so I got 1600 model sun and home right here and uh, the ACR is going on close out for less than 300 bucks and uh, that's just an incredible buy of a sun and home. It doesn't have any tooling with it but uh, I, I, I don't know. Uh, the model 1600 like this is really a deluxe machine. I thought I'd mention it but uh, I suppose you know if, uh, like I live in Washington here. I don't know, shipping on something like this might be uh, over a thousand bucks, I don't know. But uh, if you're <laughs> in Ohio or something like that, uh, 300 bucks, man, I thought that would be nice to pick up real quick. 
Yeah. So I got those things turned around. I got to, uh, now reverse the motor here. Let's see if I can uh, do that without dropping it. Pull it off. Uh, just about like that. It's kind of got a key thing here. Um, now this is kind of a custom setup uh, motor on this. And uh, it's real common what I did here. I gotta move the bolt to the back. The, uh, I have the, the original factory set up here for this. And it's got this really giant pulley and this heavy uh, higher speed motor. And it causes a bit of vibration. It's kind of unwieldy. It's like the, the pulley bolts on there is really large. So a lot of people just stick up Find an 1100 RPM motor and just do a flat belt like this. Work, works really, really well. Yeah, these tool and cutter grinders really uh, uh, add versatility. And I don't know, it, uh, with all the carbide inserts available and stuff like that, these kind of somewhat become obsolete. And, uh, but big industry still uses these things. And uh, uh, it's just nice to have in the tool room uh, this capability. So we slipped the belt on there. <laughs> I think that's the right belt. Just like that. So I put my aluminum knobs on the Allen wrenches at work and get out there. I managed to keep them. What I usually do is to start this thing. Whoa! See if it'll stay on there. It won't. <laughs> so I take it on. Oh, I have this belt has a direction. Okay, that's where it's more. Let's see if it'll stay on. Uh, we'll tighten it down here. Just a little bit. <laughs> okay. Listen it up. And I'll kind of cock it a little bit like that. Tighten it just a little bit. Let's see what it does now. That's better. Okay, what I do, get it running, and pull it. See, not run nice there. There we go. That's how to adjust a belt. <laughs> okay. I can reverse it. Usually have it go this way. Yeah. Oh, right. I'm going to get my flight seat collet stuff back in here. I usually keep a, a one inch collet in here, then I have a bunch of stuff that I can slip into that one inch. Like um, um, a vise and a B block and everything I can stick in this other rig. So. Incredible versatile machine, the tool and cutter grinder. And I really enjoy using the machine. And uh, what I, the best I can do is uh, just turn on the camera when I use this thing and uh, just show little things on it and get, and uh, hopefully you can get used to uh, using a machine like this. Okay. Well, I think I am just about out of battery, so uh, uh, I hope you're all having a good day, and uh, I hope it warms up today. Okay, bye-bye.